Right now is a perfect time to throw jerk baits. The bass are moving up shallow to spawn. They're wanting to feed up. They're wanting to gain as much weight as possible going into that spawn before they lay their eggs. And a jerk bait is a great way to catch a number of bass and some giant bass. I've caught some of my biggest bass ever on a jerk bait. I've caught numbers of fish on a jerk bait. I've had some of the most fun days fishing on a jerk bait. It's just a blast to fish. But a jerk bait is a great lure or bait to throw during the springtime because you can get a fish to react or lash out that otherwise wouldn't eat. So it catches fish that want to eat and don't want to eat, which is why it's so powerful. You can also fish a jerkbait year round. You can fish it any time of the year it excels, but specifically right now is one of my favorite times to throw a jerkbait and you should as well. You can throw a jerkbait on all different kinds of structures. You can throw it over brush piles. You can throw it next to docks. You can throw it over points, over flats. You can, if you're a forward facing sonar guy, you can target individual fish with a jerkbait. You can throw it down grass lines. You can throw it over rock over rock points. You can throw a jerkbait just about anywhere aside from, you know, throwing it through brush or through blowdowns or through grass where it's going to get hung up. But aside from that, you can throw it again next to grass. You can throw it next to a blowdown. It's such a versatile lure and it works for fish that are hungry and are not hungry. It catches numbers of fish and it catches big fish. So in today's video, we're going to go through all of the details of what works for me for a jerk bait. I've been fishing a jerk bait for golly, it gotta be 15 years now at least. I'm gonna go through where to fish it, what modifications I make to the baits, what are my two top favorite jerk baits, what is my favorite rod and reel setup. Again, I've thrown a ton and I've had a lot of experience doing this and I'm gonna share all of that hopefully in today's video. Honestly, it was one of the first fishing lures that I ever purchased was a Lucky Craft Pointer. And many of you guys know if you've been fishing for a little bit of time, the Lucky Crafts used to be amazing. And they're still really good now, but I think those older baits just had something special. A jerk bait is so deadly, again, because it draws that reaction strike and causes those fish to lash out. Let me give you an example. Many of you guys have seen a cat video or a cat in person, quite frankly, and something flies by or moves by quickly and they lash out and swat it or they lash out and pounce on it. A bass is the same way. A bass does not have hands or feet or anything to feel what's going on in the water. And so if something, hopefully your fishing lure, comes flying by it, the only way for it to figure out what it is is it for it to lash out and eat it with its mouth. And just like a cat, again, when something flies by, its natural instinct is to lash out most of the time. So that's why a jerkbait is so effective. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to go through everything that I know about jerk baits. It's uh, the last 15 years of knowledge jumped into this video. So you're going to want to stick around to the end to make sure you hear all of that information. Now, before we open up this box and we start breaking down, you know, all my secrets and all my tips, modifications, favorite baits, colors, line, you name it, all of the details, go ahead, like the video down below and comment on your favorite jerk bait brand. I'd be curious to know. But if you could, again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Now let's open up this box. So you guys can see in there, this is just one of my jerkbait boxes that I brought today. But I'm going to make this very simple for you guys. You really only need, in my opinion, two brands of jerkbaits. You don't need to go out and dump a bunch of money into jerkbaits. You can if you want to. Again, you can fine tune this just like any other technique where you know you can have a bunch of different sizes, colors, different brands, all that other stuff. But for the most part, I'm gonna say 90% of the time, there are two lures or two brands that I particularly like. Number one is the Vision 110. It is made by Megabass. In my opinion, this is the best jerkbait on the market. I know they're expensive, but again, you don't fish this through cover, so you're most of the time not going to get hung up. But if you don't break this off on a fish or break it off, you know, 50 feet up a tree, I've had buddies cast this, you know, 50 feet up a tree and we've had to break it off. But if you don't break it off, guys, this lure will last for, for a long, long, long time. I mean, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to mess up. You might have to replace the hooks and the split rings and all that, and we'll jump into that. But for the most part, if you don't break it off, yeah, it's expensive. It's a $25 lure. 
but it will last a very, very, very long time and you'll be able to catch a ton of fish on it. So in my opinion, it's worth it. But I believe that the Vision 110 is by far the best jerkbait out there because this lure is the most erratic. And what I mean by that is if you snap this bait super hard, this bait is going to rip up to four or five feet. I'm not even kidding. Like I'm talking from like over here all the way over here on a single snap of the rod and then can shoot back. I mean, you can do some crazy stuff with this. It has the most erratic action. And again, from a jerk bait, drawing a reaction strike, if they're not hungry, let's say, if we're strictly drawing a reaction strike, this bait is by far the best one out there. Now, this, this lure is very common. The bass see it a lot. It has a sound, if you get the one that's not silent, that bass know, and again, on, on lakes around the country, uh, especially pressured fisheries, if the fish have seen this lure a lot, they are going to shut down from it. And that brings me to my second favorite jerkbait, which is the Spro Mix Stick. Hands down, my close second on my favorite jerkbait. It's a little bit different of a profile, but for the most part, you guys can see it's about the same size. The big difference is the lip size. And we'll jump into this real quick. But that mix stick is deadly. It's a little bit subtler of an action. You more pull the bait, I would say, rather than snap. If you snap this bait, it sometimes, you know, rolls over and, you know, kind of dives, doesn't look the best. My opinion, the best way to work this bait is to more pull it versus actually snap it. But bigger lipped bill there. And it's, it, it's not as erratic. It's more subtle. It stays tighter. It doesn't move as much, but it stops more on a dime. And again, it's a great one-two punch when that Vision 110 does not work to go to the Spro Mix Stick as an alternative option. Between these two baits right here, guys, I kid you not, it will cover all of your jerkbait needs on 90% of the lake, 90% of the time, and will catch 90% of the jerkbait fish between these two lures. So don't make it too complicated. Again, you don't need to go out and drop a bunch of money. Uh, to do this, you just need a couple of different lures. Now, those are my two brands that I'd recommend right there. Again, Vision, Vision 110 by Megabass, and the Spro Mix Stick. Now, let's talk about colors of jerkbaits. I definitely lean more towards natural colors and presentations. And you don't really need a bunch of different colors in a jerkbait. So let's start off with the Vision 110 colors. I'll give you guys two. My favorite color is Pro Blue. It's a little bit clear. Again, got a blue back and a pearl white belly. One of the best colors out there. The cool thing about Mega Bass is they offer a bunch of different color options, guys, and a bunch of different color options in the same color. And what I mean by that is you can get pro blue, you know, with a, a yellow belly. You can get pro blue with an orange belly. You can get a, a number of different, you know, color variations in between kind of the major colors, I'll say. So they did a really good job at that. But Pro Blue is hands down one of my favorites. It's just a bait fish looking profile. Again, got some blue, got some white. Nothing crazy, like I said. I would throw this most of the time when it's sunny out or sunnier conditions, maybe even some clouds, but not too much. And again, just that clear, natural presentation is an absolute fish catcher. My other number two color I would tell you guys to get is something that's opaque. This is like a, a pearl white right here, as you guys can see but get something that's not translucent that uh, the fish can see when it's cloudy out. So again, I fish these darker colors when it's cloudy out and just allows those fish to clue in on that bait when there's not as much light penetrating the water. So those, those opaque colors seem to, for the most part, work better when it's cloudy out. So those are the two colors there that I like. I would say to get, get one clearer color, natural color, and one more opaque color for when it's cloudy out. That's really it, guys. So two jerk baits from Mega Bass, and uh, that'll be, you know, you're 90% of the way there to a jerk bait bite. You'll get bit. Now, for the Spro Mix Stick, same thing. This is their Chartreuse Shad. Looks very similar, guys. I mean, you guys can see I keep it simple in my colors. Got a blue back, white belly, pretty clear here in the center. The only thing that's different on this one is it has a very subtle Chartreuse line down the middle of the bait. And honestly, you guys have been watching this far, so you guys are going to get some great information here. 
I'll spill the juice here. This is hands down one of the best colors ever made, period, across the board, across any brand. This chartreuse shad shad on spotted bass lakes and fisheries particularly, or specifically, is a hands down fish catcher. Something about, you know, that natural presentation of the blue and white combined with a little bit of chartreuse causes those spots to lash out and react. So you guys that are listening, you guys get that juice. That's hands down one of the best color patterns out there. I wish Mega Bass actually made one like that, but unfortunately they don't as far as I'm aware. So that's color number one. And number two, again, same thing, guys. This one's called Herring, I believe, by Mixtick. You guys can see it's not clear at all. It's more of a white, and it's got a blue-green back. But it's completely opaque. So you got your clear color for when it's sunnier and your opaque color for when it's cloudier. It's that simple. Again, right there, you got two different or four different jerk baits, and that'll cover, like I said, 90, 90% of the conditions, it'll catch fish 90% of the time there's a jerk bait, and that's really all you need. Now, a sneaky thing that I've been experimenting with and I'm really excited to use about this year is this new color by Spro. And I, I say new. I think it came out last year. They're super tough to get. I think they're out of stock on most places, and I've been waiting for some of these for a while. Ended up picking them up this winter, but this is chrome. And you guys know I live on a spotted bass fishery with herring here in the southeast, specifically on Lake Lanier. So those spotted bass love chrome, applied to Hartwell, Clarks Hill, Lake Russell. I mean, anywhere in the southeast or quite frankly, anywhere in the country where there's herring, those fish love chrome. So I'm super excited to throw this chrome color this spring. I've already caught some fish on it, and then I'm most excited to use it kind of the end of April, early May, when that herring spawn is going on on those clay points and uh, rock points, stuff like that. I think this thing's going to get absolutely torched. So that's kind of a sneaky sleeper, just again, a a niche color for herring lakes. I think that's going to work very, very well. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. All right, now let's jump into the modifications that I make for each of those two brands of jerk baits right out of the package. So let's put some of these away just so we have, you know, some organization here. But I still have my Vision 110 and my Spro Mix Stick. Let's start with the Vision 110. This bait is phenomenal right out of the package. Hands down fish catcher, no questions about it. Now, the only thing I do change and I would recommend here is that the Vision 110 comes with hooks that are extremely sharp, but not very strong. I've never personally had any issues with largemouth, but specifically on spotted bass, if I tend to use those hooks that come right out of the package, they tend to bend out. I've literally watched brand new hooks, brand new hooks from the Vision 110, on a spot that was, you know, 10 feet from the boat, when it turned and threw its head, bent out one of the hooks. So on fluorocarbon line, I might add. So that's even with stretch. So my opinion is with, you know, larger fish and spotted bass or smallmouth bass that generate a lot of force and, you know, are very erratic and change direction and are very aggressive, I would recommend changing out the hooks that come out of the package. I changed my hooks to Gamagatsu Nano Finesse. I believe it's the Aaron Martin's Nano Finesse trebles to a size number five. Very important. And again, we'll jump into that with modifications in terms of weighting this bait. But those are the hooks that are my favorite. Split rings. I haven't had any issues with split rings out of the package, guys. So the only way I blow those out is if I catch like a striper is really the only way that those bend out. And then I replace those with owner hyperwire size number three. But again, you don't need to worry with that out of the package. So go to those, uh, or at least for me, those Gamagatsu finesse treble hooks have been my favorites. They're, they're stronger for sure than the stock hooks out of the Mega Bass package. And they're super sharp. I mean, you, you can't, that's why I have these hook covers on here. As you guys can see, that does two reasons. I'll jump to that real quick. One, it keeps me from hooking myself because I've hooked myself so many times with jerkbait hooks, it's not even funny. And then two, it keeps my hooks from, you know, dulling out or rounding out in the, in the box. 
as you guys can see, all of my jerk baits have them on there. Again, keeps me safe and then keeps the hook sharp. So go to those Gamagatsu trebles. They're sticky sharp. They are perfect in my opinion for these baits. Even though these baits are, are super expensive and they are extremely well refined and tuned baits, they are mass produced hands down. So every bait is going to perform slightly different. I'll say for the, mo for the most part, they come fine out of the package, but there are some that perform and behave differently than others. So what you're going to want to do when you first get a bait is again, tie it on your fishing rod and then throw it out in the water and see, does it sink? Does it float? How fast does it float? Because ultimately with these baits, you want the bait to suspend. And you guys have heard me talk about it before. Many fish, especially predator fish, feed up. So you always want this bait above the fish. And so if you have a bait that sinks, that's not going to be very good because it's going to be tough to keep it above the fish. And if you have a bait that floats too quickly, if that fish is interested and it flies away from it, it's not going to be very interested either. So you want this bait to suspend as much as possible. And what I mean by suspend is neither sinks nor floats. And you can do that in a number of different ways. One is the hooks. Like I mentioned, these Gamagatsu hooks are a little bit heavier than the stock hooks out of the package. Again, these are size number five. And for me, just by replacing all three of those treble hooks with those Aaron Martin Nano Finesse trebles, it gets this bait to suspend very, very well, if anything, with a slow rise, which is completely fine. So that's one way to do it. If you find that even changing that, again, not every bait is the same and they're mass produced. If it's still floating too quickly, go ahead and throw a size number four on the front treble hook instead of a five. It's a little bit bigger treble hook, and it keeps the weight, again, central, and it should help that bait to suspend even more. The second thing you can do to make sure that your bait is suspended properly, again, if it's floating too quickly, is you can actually wrap, wrap wire around the front treble hook. And it doesn't take much, just, you know, a couple of wraps sometimes, but you can go ahead and wrap some wire around that front hook, like some uh, either, you honestly could do, I mean, they make wire to wrap around it on like tackle warehouse and stuff, but you could also get lead strips. I've never used the lead strips, but you could also get lead strips. They also sell, sell there as well that you could just stick on the belly. But either one of those will help suspend your bait. Again, you want that bait suspended and not flying up and not sinking. If it's sinking, you've added too much weight and you might need to scale back on either waiting, uh, waiting the lure or go to some smaller treble hooks. So those are kind of the modifications to the Vision 110. Again, change your hooks out. Don't worry about the split rings. If you are going to change the split rings, owner hyperwire size number three. But make sure that bait is suspending in the water. That's the best possible. Now for the mix stick. This is the Spro mix stick. The modifications that I do to this bait are actually nothing. And you may say right now, Cam, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, the Vision 110 is, you know, more expensive, you know, $10 at least more expensive than the mix stick. Why is the mix stick not your favorite bait? Again, as I previously mentioned, this bait shines in specific applications and is less subtle, I would say, and less erratic than that Vision 110. So it's not necessarily how the bait comes out of the package. It's what I can get the bait to do in order to cause that fish to react. And I just feel that that Vision 110 is a better tool or better lure for myself that I can get to do a number of different things. But anyway, the mix stick, again, close number second, hands down, still a great bait. Like I said, between those two baits covers 95% of the applications. But this bait is fantastic, in my opinion, out of the package. It comes with uh, Gamagatsu treble hooks. They're not the Nano Finesse uh, that I switched the Vision 110s to. But again, Ga Gamagatsu treble hooks, fantastic. This bait, most of the time, again, it's mass-produced, but most of the time, suspends very well out of the package. It's weighted well. You can just pick this Spro mix stick up and go fishing. Really nothing there. It's got a little bit bigger split rings. You don't need to worry about this bait at all. I'm serious when I say that. 
caught a number of different fish on it, catches a bunch of different species of fish, but even spotted bass and smallmouth have a tough time, you know, bending these hooks and, you know, messing up this bait whatsoever. So excellent bait there. No questions asked. Again, if you want to, if the bait's floating too much and you want it to, you know, suspend a little bit more, maybe upgrade the size treble hook or again, go to the lead strip or the wire. But that bait is solid out of the package. So those are my modifications to these two brands of jerk baits. And they are just the tried and true staple of jerk bait fishing. Again, they work a number of different applications and work year round and they cause fish to react and they ultimately just catch a bunch of fish and big fish as well. That's why they are special baits. At this point, again, please like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below now what your favorite brand that's not listed here, so not Mega Bass or Spro, of jerkbait is. I'm wondering if there's some, you know, sneakier, less mainstream brands or styles of jerkbaits that you guys enjoy. Now, let's talk about dialing in a jerkbait bite. So we've already gone through, you know, the colors and, you know, when to throw them, where to throw them, all that stuff, modifications that I do. Let's talk about dialing in a jerkbait bite. And what I mean by that is, as you guys can see, now we're going a little bit deeper or a deeper dive into jerk baits. But I have a number of different jerk baits here, and each behaves a little bit differently and is used in different applications. So, my recommendation for you guys going out to fish a jerk bait is start off with the standard size. I'm going to say standard size, it'll be the 110 size, which is approximately, you know, four to five inches long. That's these right here. That's the standard jerk bait to go figure out if there's a jerkbait bite that day. Again, this technique, as, as much as it works year round, you know, and across the country, it's not going to work every day. So you have to figure out if it's going to work that day. As you guys know, and I preach it all the time, the conditions change day to day, hour to hour, it seems like, especially here in the Southeast, especially on Herring Lakes. So you're gonna have to adapt and just figure out if there's a jerkbait bite. But start off by throwing the standard size and two things you can do here. One, look with your eyes. If your jerkbait's pretty shallow, you can see with your eyes if fish are coming out to the jerkbait and either eating it, you'll obviously catch them, or if they're coming out and stopping and then swimming off, you see that they're not interested in that jerkbait. Same thing with your electronics, option number two. You can watch with your forward-facing sonar, see how the fish react. Again, they're either gonna eat it or they're gonna come up, look at it, or not even care, quite frankly, if they don't care, it's probably not a jerkbait bite, but if they come up, look at it, and don't eat it and swim away, you know something needs to change. And this is my progression for jerkbait fishing. The first thing you can do is change color. As I mentioned, keep it simple. Most of the time, I like my natural colors or opaque colors if it's cloudy. You can try changing the color. Personally, I have found that color doesn't matter as much, so my first thing to change is the size of the jerk bait. And let me show you what I mean by that. The first thing I do, I'm, I'm a big bait guy. You guys know that. If you guys have been watching this channel long enough, I love swim baits. I love big glide baits. I love targeting the largest fish in the lake if possible. Again, most of the time. So the first progression that I make is going larger with my jerk bait. So as you guys can see here, look at the size difference of this jerk bait compared to the, the Vision 110. I mean, this jerkbait is, is huge. It's probably twice as, you know, twice, as, twice as large by volume than this Vision 110. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is step up. And what that's gonna do is again, most people throw a standard size jerkbait, I'll call it. You know, that four and a half inch size jerkbait. And so what this is gonna do is two things. One, it's gonna show those fish something that they haven't seen before. And two, it's going to be a profile that they haven't seen before. So step up to a larger jerk bait and that might be just enough to get those fish to commit and react. So that's my first progression. And this is also going to depend, let me jump in here real quick. This is also going to depend on time of year and water temperature. If the water temperature is warmer, again, spring, summer, fall, the big bait is a great one to jump to, again, because those fish are active. 
their metabolism is running, they're feeding, normally the bait fish are larger. So keep that in mind when you're making your progression or trying different things with a jerk bait. But that would be the time to go larger with that jerk bait. The opposite end of it is to go smaller with your jerk bait. It is a more finesse presentation and oftentimes it can get those fish that are either pressured or feeding on smaller bait fish to go ahead and commit and eat your jerk bait. So again, if you're seeing those fish come out and they're not quite committing or not eating, go ahead and switch to a smaller jerk bait, especially in the winter time when those fish are slower and more lethargic. Again, finessier baits tend to get bit during those times of year most of the time. So again, for size comparison, there's it compared to the mix stick. So again, very, very small jerk bait. But sometimes, again, if it's in the wintertime, finesse presentation, you know, heavily pressured fish, smaller bait fish, like they're feeding on threadfin shad, go ahead and switch to a super small jerk bait. And that can oftentimes be just a difference maker enough to go ahead and get those jerk bait fish to react. Now, if you work through Again, different sizes of jerk baits, different colors of jerk baits. Maybe you try some different depths of diving for jerk baits and they're still not reacting to it. It's probably not a jerk bait bite. You probably need to move on and go try a different presentation or application. Again, it's not going to work every day, but it will work very, very often compared to most lures out there year round across the country for all species of bass. From here, I'm going to take you guys through my favorite jerkbait rod and reel setup with line sizes. I've learned a ton over the years, specifically in the gear that I use, and it makes a huge difference to your not only action of your jerkbait, but also your hookup to land ratio as well. So let's kind of walk through this. Hands down, I have tried, oh my goodness, I've tried custom rods, I've tried a number of different brands, I've tried so many different jerkbait rods. And I finally found the perfect one. This is the X-Bride 610 Medium. And I'll read this out for you guys so you guys know. The model number is EXC610MB. And then it is rated for quarter to three quarter ounces lure, eight to 16 pound line. And again, it's a 610 Medium. So X-Bride hands down best jerk bait rod on the market that I have particularly found. The cool thing about it too, guys, is it's not crazy expensive. You know, it's not an NRX. It's not 600 something dollars for sure, but it's a solid rod. Hands down. I might even buy two. I'd like to buy two. I probably will this year, but if you're going to have a dedicated jerk bait rod, this is it. You could also use this rod for, you know, small poppers if you wanted to, or small topwaters. I would say it's kind of in that same category. But for me, I always have a jerk bait tied on year round on this rod. That's just what I use it for. And like I said, I'll probably buy two. It's that good. So that's the rod. Again, 610. I like a shorter rod because again, working the bait just easier. So you're not slapping the water. But this rod snaps the bait super well, but also loads deep into the blank so you don't pull those treble hooks out when you are fighting a fish. So it's perfect, perfect rod. So if you're going to go buy one, check that rod out. Reel, pick your favorite brand of reel. It's not as important, guys. I like a, the things to look for is I like a faster reel tree, a reel retrieve or gear ratio. This is an 8.0 to 1. So super fast. This is Abu Garcia Revo MGX, super light reel. I would, uh, I would recommend just if you're, you know, you're going to splurge and spoil yourself. This is a pretty light rod, a very light rod. Go ahead and pair it up, you know, with a super light reel as well. And you've got a killer jerk bait rod and reel combo that is not going to wear you out all day per se. Again, especially ripping the bait, your arms going to get tired, but with the right rod and reel setup, it really helps with the fatigue. So Fast reel, that's all I would recommend when you're ripping this bait. You know, again, sometimes, like I said, with the Vision 110, you can get it to dart four to five feet. You want to be able to eat up that slack so you can go ahead and get to the next rip. Or same thing in the summertime or spring when these fish are really feeding, sometimes they knock so much slack in that line eating that jerk bait. I mean, they T-bone it and uh, coming at you. So you want that faster reel retrieve to go ahead and catch up to that fish. 
Now line. Line is one of the most important things on this entire setup. More than rod, more than reel. Uh, man, it is a very, very important aspect to the jerkbait setup for two reasons. One, line size will determine the action of your jerkbait. And two, line size will determine the depth of your jerkbait. So let's back up here a little bit real quick. There's three, di- three types of fishing lines out there, generally speaking. There's braid, mono, and fluorocarbon. Mono floats and has too much stretch in my opinion. So at the end of a long cast, if you go to rip the bait because of the stretchiness of the mono, you're not going to get a lot of action on the jerk bait. So mono is out. Braid has no stretch, so you get a lot of action on the bait. However, it's very visible underwater and... I believe, this is my opinion, again, fishing very, very clear water, that it makes a difference and the fish can see it sometimes. So that leaves us at fluorocarbon. In my opinion, fluorocarbon is the perfect happy medium between braid and mono. You get the, you know, the clearness and the invisibility with fluorocarbon and you get less stretch than mono, but a little bit more stretch than braid, which gives you a little bit of forgiveness. So you're not going to get quite the action with as you would with braid. However, it's a great compromise in my opinion. Also, fluorocarbon sinks, which again, with a jerk bait, you're fishing it down in the water column a little bit. It'll help you get a little bit more depth out of that bait. And so in my opinion, there is no other option other than fluorocarbon. Now, with line size with fluorocarbon, you can fish anywhere from, I would recommend, eight all the way up to 20 pound fluorocarbon. And hold on, you guys are gonna, you know, you, some people are already freaking out here. Like 20 pound line with a jerk bait. Hold on, we'll get into all that. You can do a number of different things with your fishing line that changes the action of the jerk bait. So, as I mentioned, the two things that change are action of the lure and depth of the lure. So, most of the time, I run eight or 10 pound on my jerk bait rod. The reason that being, again, being in the southeast on Lake Lanier and and fishing very clear lakes, I don't really have to worry about structure or really depth. I mean, the really deep lakes, if my if my jerkbait runs an extra foot or two, it's not the biggest deal in the world and actually is sometimes better for me. So six and eight pound line, don't really have to worry about breaking off. I'm sorry, not six or eight. Eight and ten pound line, don't have to worry about breaking off. If you're going to start somewhere, go with ten. 10 or 12 is a perfect place to start. Now, when I was out on Lake Fork in Texas and all those other Texas lakes while I lived out there, I sometimes went, you know, I, as low as I went is probably 12 pound line, 15 pound line, 17 pound line. And the heaviest I've ever gone is 20 pound line because sometimes fishing those long clay points and those flats out there in Texas, your boat's out in, you know, eight feet, eight feet of water, maybe five feet of water. And you're casting as far as you can. You can't even hit the shore but you're casting up, you know, to two feet of water, one foot of water, and it's just super shallow. So as I mentioned, you can vary line sizes to get different depths. So the lighter the line, the deeper the jerkbait is going to go. So again, on eight and 10 pound line, the jerkbait's gonna go deeper. If you throw a 17 to 20 pound line on the same jerkbait, it's going to run shallower. For example, if this bro mix stick runs, let's say it runs five feet out of the packet, I don't know if it does or not. It's probably somewhere around there. But if let's say it runs five feet out of the package. If I throw that on eight pound line, I might be able to get this bait to run to six to seven feet. Now you may think it's not that much of a difference, but again, depending on where the fish are set up, maybe the break is on, you know, eight feet or nine feet of the point you're fishing. And just that extra one or two feet can make all the difference in the world. You got to trust me on this guys. You got to get tuned in and tuned into what the fish are doing. And sometimes those little changes can make all the difference. Now, if I were fishing this five foot bait and let's say, again, I'm, I'm back in Texas thrown over a flat point and the, the points only, you know, four feet. Well, this bait runs to five. So what I can do is I can throw it on 20 pound line. I can also keep my rod tip up when I'm working the bait and this bait will run anywhere from, you know, one to three feet deep with that heavier line. So that's how you can change the depth of the same jerk bait just by changing your line. Now, the other thing I mentioned that you have to be careful of is line size affects the action of the bait. So if I go lighter line, that bait's going to have more action. 
So again, if I throw eight pound line and let's say my vision 110, that's where I might be able to get, you know, that four to five feet movement of that lure. It's going to be more erratic. There's less drag through the water with that line and it's going to move more. Now, vice versa, if I go all the way up to 20 pound line, that vision 110 might go from, you know, average moving three, three feet. It might only move, you know, a foot, foot and a half, maybe two. So it's going to damper the action for sure on the movement of the bait. Now you still be able to get it to re, you know, rip and react pretty hard. But again, the higher line size or the heavier line size, I should say, the less action the bait is going to have or less action you're going to be able to get the bait to have. So keep that in mind. So get sneaky with it. Get sneaky with your line, guys. Feel free to try different things, you know, and just try the different conditions, different applications. Again, changing your line can meet all the difference in the world in terms of if you get dialed into a jerkbait bite or not. So feel free to experiment with that. From here, let's jump into cadences. I could probably do another hour long video on cadences alone for a jerk bait. They range from day to day, hour to hour, and you are going to have to experiment to find out what the fish want. However, I'll keep it simple right now and just give you guys, you know, one or two cadences that work most of the time. But I've caught fish doing crazy cadences with a jerk bait. It's unbelievable. Generally in the summertime, I like to go faster and uh, you know, don't even stop the bait. And in the winter time, when the water's cold, the fish are lethargic, go ahead and uh, I like to pause the bait up to you know 10 seconds at a time. That's about the longest I pause the bait for. But again, there's a number of different cadences in between there that I'm gonna share with you guys. Number one, if you're just starting with a jerk bait or want somewhere to start, the best cadence in my opinion is a twitch, twitch, pause. So it's a one, two, and pause. And that bait is going to shoot, shoot, and then stop. And that fish, if it's following it, is going to come up and nose on the bait and watch it. And the next time that bait moves, you know, you go to twitch, it's going to lash out and eat that bait. So I would start again, twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. Now, what you can do from there is, again, I mentioned in the summertime, I like to keep the bait moving. So I'm just constantly almost working it like a top water. Twitch, 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 twitch. You know, just keep it moving. Opposite in the winter time, I might only do a single twitch and a pause. So I might just twitch it once, pause, and count maybe to five. Twitch it, count to 10. Another thing you can do is just combine all of those, you know, and keep it erratic keep the fish guessing just like yourself, you know, change up, you know, you might twitch twice and then twitch once. You might pause for 10 seconds one time and then pause for one second the next. Try it out guys. Like I said, I, I could literally probably go through an hour of different cadences in different conditions, different times of year, different fish that I'm fishing for, whether it be smallmouth, spotted bass or largemouth. We could go so deep on this. It's not even funny, but those are some cadences. Go ahead and start off. And again, you're trying to draw that reaction strike. So as soon as you go to rip, that's normally when those fish are going to react and lash out at the bait. And again, the reason that works so well is because the fish believe that it is a dying shad. Again, this jerk bait is imitating a minnow, a herring, a shad, whatever it may be that's dying. And that's why it's, you know, twitching and then pausing. Cause again, it's, it's stalling out, it's dying. And so that's why it works on so many different lakes across the country. And same thing that we talked about earlier about watching, you know, how the fish react to your jerk bait. Same thing here with your cadence. You want to be watching with your eyes visually, if you can see the fish or with your forward facing sonar on how the fish react, because your cadence is your second thing that you can do aside from color, I guess line size too and size. So a number of different things you can change, but cadence is one of those things that you can keep in your back pocket to change, to try to get those fish to react. Because I have gone certain days where, you know, the tw two twitches and a pause, the fish will come flying out, but won't eat it. And then as soon as I went to a one twitch and pause, they smash it. So each day is different, but make sure you use your electronics and your eyes to see what the fish are telling you that day or that hour to make the adjustments necessary. So that is just about everything that I know about jerk baits. Hopefully my experience through the, and sharing it through this video has helped streamline the learning process for you guys. Hopefully you learned something from this video that you can go and apply and try out next time you are out on the water. 
again, we talked about different areas of, of the lake on where to fish a jerk bait, what kind of structures to fish a jerk bait. We talked about my favorite brands, favorite colors, favorite line size, you know, favorite what you can do with different lines, what cadences you can use. All of these things, again, you can condense and think about on the water now that you know them to try to develop and establish that jerk bait bite. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and try to get some better at something every single day. Again, I always preach it to you guys. Try to learn something new. Hopefully this video helped with that. You know that you can go try next time you're on the water, but try to get better at one thing every day, just a little bit. So get better every day, and I will talk to you all soon and see you all in the next video.